This video contains traces of severe stupidity and scenes of graphic ownage. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello and welcome to the first episode of my first YouTube series, Creation Astronomy Propaganda Debunked, or CRAP Debunked for short. No, it's not just a snazzy acronym either, as in this series I will be dealing with the tired old creationist crap I so frequently encounter on the internet. However, I'm not a biologist and the theory of evolution is not my forte, so I've decided to tackle creationists on my own turf, that being astrophysics, cosmology, astronomy and space science. I might also touch on astrochemistry and astrobiology if needs be. Over the course of this series, I aim to dispel the myth of creation astronomy, debunking a plethora of common arguments which, in my view, are used to impress and confuse uneducated members of the public. I hope you can take away some ammunition from these videos, and perhaps even learn something you didn't already know. A quick disclaimer for creationists, the theory of evolution has nothing to do with cosmology. If you don't understand why, compare these verified definitions of the two fields and place spot the difference. There is no Darwinian model of cosmology, and conditions and processes governing cosmological evolution are vastly different than those responsible for biological evolution that we observe on Earth. So let's kick it off with everyone's favourite inmate, Kent Hovind. Kent claims to have taught high school science for 15 years. I hope he's since forgotten how, because his recent lessons are far from scientific. There are two ways to look at this Earth. Some people look at the world and say, you know, it's amazing, a big bang made this from nothing. That's the humanist worldview, which says man is God. Other people look at the world and say, you know, it's incredible design, there must be a smart designer. That's the creationist worldview, which says God is God. And we all answer to him. And one of these two views is wrong, and these two world views are actually at war with each other. Well, Kent, that's a good start. Two logical fallacies within seconds of one another. No scientist worth his or her salt suggests that the Big Bang made Earth from nothing. This is a rather spurious straw man, designed to undermine the weighty success of the Big Bang Theory without actually addressing any science. Furthermore, the Big Bang Theory is not actually related to planetary formation, since even in a steady state universe, new stars and new planets would form. Secondly, suggesting that the Big Bang Theory or his particular brand of young Earth creationism are the only two candidates for explaining the origin of the universe is to invoke a false dichotomy. There may be any number of unexplored explanations. All the matter in the universe was squished into a dot smaller than a period on a page? That's one crowded dot, folks. And heavy, too. Man, who held that thing up? No one did, Kent, because there was no up. And by much more than a period, what you mean to say is of zero volume. The term Big Bang is something of a misnomer, since there was no explosion, but rather an expansion of space-time. Since all the space-time in the universe was compacted to a singularity, there were no spatial dimensions present by which to measure its size. In fairness, the infinite volume hypothesis is largely speculative, since the earliest reckoned state of the universe is one Planck time after zero. This is about 10 to the minus 43 seconds, or 1 10,000 million billion trillion trillionth of a second. Any earlier than this, and it becomes difficult to identify the state, because the fundamental forces that govern our universe essentially all merge together and require a unified theory. However, it is logically fitting to propose a singularity state at T0, because the density of the universe approaches an asymptote as we backtrack through cosmological history. Our best hopes for determining this date at T0, and possibly earlier, lie with a comprehensive quantum interpretation for gravity. I hope to expand on this in a later video. It is worth mentioning that even after the Planck epoch, the entire universe was still many times smaller than a proton, and really minuscule compared with a period point. So basically, I believe in the beginning, God, and you believe in the beginning, dirt. <laughs> Tell me my theory is religious and yours is scientific. Oh no, sir, they're both religious. Just ignoring for a moment that Genesis outlines how Adam was made from clay, I'd like to question Kent's definition of dirt. For simplicity, we can say that the composition of the early universe was entirely gaseous hydrogen and helium, at a ratio of about 10 to 1, and remained this way for millions of years. It wasn't until the first generation of stars formed that heavier elements were churned out through nuclear fusion. 
Dirt is certainly the wrong word here, and Kent knows it. This is another attempt to undermine the Big Bang Theory with wordplay. I find it personally quite offensive that Kent refers to evolution, lumping biology and cosmology together here, as a religion. I myself steer well clear of religion, and I'm prepared to admit that there are some things scientists don't know, rather than assume any truth based entirely on faith. I don't practice any form of worship, and I draw my beliefs about the origin of the universe and the origin of species on mountains of demonstrable evidence. Lastly, when the books I get my facts from become out of date, I seek out updated editions. If the whole universe began as a swirling dot, big bang, shouldn't everything be spinning the same way? Well, it's not. We have two planets for sure, possibly three, they don't know about Pluto, but two for sure spin backwards. Oh dear, Kent is really getting out of his depth now. Firstly, let's examine the claim that everything in the universe should be spinning the same way. One fundamental tenet of modern cosmology is the assumption that the universe is isotropic, inferring that there is no preferred direction in space, no up, down, left or right. If the entire universe were spinning, what exactly would it be relative to? There is no reference frame outside of the universe by which to assess its motion, thus the universe itself is the only true inertial frame. The presence of an angular momentum vector for the entire universe would violate cosmology as it would have a preferred direction. It is most fitting to say that the net angular momentum of the universe is zero and is conserved. The matter forming stars, galaxies, etc. was not flung out during the Big Bang, it was sitting on space-time as it expanded. This is a common misconception, one that Kent is preying on. The reason astrophysical objects and systems rotate is gravity. Free body systems, such as space, where gravity is the major influence, are very favourable for orbital motion. I will certainly expand on this in later videos. As for Venus and Uranus, well, as I stated earlier, the Big Bang is unrelated to planetary formation, but in light of Ked's ignorance, here is my response. I'm not sure. It is evidently favourable for planets in our solar system to rotate clockwise, looking at the South Pole, because they act to conserve the angular momentum of the solar system, which is present due to the Sun's rotation, something I'll address in episode 2. There are hypotheses suggesting that Venus may have been tidally locked with the Earth-Moon system in the distant past, or may have formed from the collision of two large objects. Venus is certainly a strange and compelling world, but its behaviour is by no means evidence for creation. Uranus is likely to have been tipped on its side after formation by a collision with a similar sized object. More puzzling for Uranus is its near circular orbit, which seems unlikely after a massive collision. I want to stress that these mysteries are openly admitted by scientists, and a gap in our knowledge does not justify the creation hypothesis. People ask me all the time, they say, uh, Brother Hoven, do you think there's intelligent life on other planets? I say, no. I taught high school 15 years. I don't think there's much intelligent life on this planet. <laughs> I'm a disciple of science. I know the universe. Well, that wraps up episode one of this series. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. If you have any comments or suggestions, feel free to post them here or send me a message. If you know of any crap you'd like to see get owned, by all means link me to it. To keep up with crap debunked, please subscribe. This is Andromeda's Wake wishing you clear skies and good debunking. Probably already two cards on withdrawn the concluding port on, but maybe there is still hope for the young if they reject the tongue beings long from the tongues of the ignorant fools who call themselves teachers and listen instead to their science teachers. Upon blind faith they place reliance. What we need more of is science. On blind faith they place reliance. What we need more of is science. On blind faith they place reliance. What we need more of is science. On blind faith they place reliance. What we need more of is science.